Welcome back to Star Wars CCG Collecting Weekly thing. We got a interesting one this week. We got all the Star Destroyers. We're going to be sort of ranking them, but it's hard to rank the Star Destroyers because they're all amazing. They're all really cool. So they, they all are great, but we're just going to be going through the Star Destroyers. It's not going to be as controversial as the last week's videos, which I know... Got a lot of people worked up. What's the best Han? What's the best Luke? Got a lot of great comments last week. We'll be going over those at the end of the video. And of course, we'll be giving away another starter deck. All you got to do is comment below. You can say anything you want. You can say, hey, your video sucks. Hey, hey, I don't like what you did to my boy Jet Porkins. A lot of you were upset that I razzed, <laughs> razzed your boy Jet Porkins, but I'm sorry. I apologize. He does have a good starship, Destiny 6. So let's go over the Star Destroyers. Good. Our first catch of the day. Let's just go chronologically from uh, the premiere. The premiere de uh, Star Destroyer. So it's the Devastator. Classic. It's the first unique Star Destroyer. So for reference, the original Star Destroyer, non-unique, is Power 9, Armor 6, Hyperspeed 3, Deploy 8, Forfeit 9, Ability of 1. So the Devastator is same deploy, same forfeit, one power more, two abilities. So it's pretty good. And, of course, it's the first Star Destroyer you see in the movie. I'm going to just rate it. I, I personally think it's one of the stronger Star Destroyers, and I'll be coming back and telling what my weakest and strongest are. It's got good. It's got a good picture, not the best. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it sets the tone for the rest of the unique Star Destroyers, so... Next one, we have Conquest here. Uh, the Conquest was the New Hope uh, Unique Star Destroyer, and about every set they released one or two Unique Star Destroyers. So this is the one that's chasing Han after Tatooine, and much like the Devastator, it's power nine, one, one more power, and other than that, it's a little worse than Devastator. That ability, too, on the Devastator is great, and other Unique Star Destroyers that have the De ability, too, because then you can throw a 2-2... Two -two a 2-2 pilot on it, power 2 ability to pilot, like, like an uh, uh, e officer evacs or something like that, and then they're, they can just draw destiny. This, you got to have somebody of ability 3 on there. And it really doesn't do anything that unique. After initiating a battle against Falcon, may look at the rebel hand. Again, that's really not that good. What does it do? You look at the hand and it says, oh... You're going to get destroyed because they have a Falcon, and you just have the Conquest. You look at their hand, and they have a bunch of interrupts. It just tells you you're going to lose the battle. Well, it's cool. Awesome, awesome picture. Uh, one of the weaker Star Destroyers, I would say. Next up, we have the Hoth. One of the two Hoth Star Destroyers. All right, it's the Stalker. We all love it. Great. Look at that picture. Just the best picture ever. Um, apparently, all these Star Destroyers are... Reassigned to the Death Squadron. Now that's that's a name. Now that's a name to strike fear. The Death Squadron. Are, are we the baddies? You know what I mean? <laughs> so this Star Destroyer is deploying forfeit the same. And all it does is have an extra armor. And deploys probe droids deploy free to related sites at same system. Very small window where this Star Destroyer is better than another unique Star Destroyer. Because you're not going to have that many unique Star Destroyers in your deck. There's just not room. They deploy for too much. Uh, arguably, they're, they could, they're a little underpowered just because they're deployed so high. They have good forfeit, but um, if you only get a choice between three or four unique Star Destroyers in your deck, it's tough putting the Stalker in there. Probe Droids maybe in an ISB deck, but other than that, Ability 1 and not doing much else... It has the coolest picture, but it's it's one of the weaker one of the weaker unique Star Destroyers. Next up, we have the Tyrant. I, as a kid, thought the Stalker was the ultimate card, and I thought the Tyrant was crap. I was like, the Stalker's so cool, but guess what? Tyrant's much much better. Up until Hoth, I would say this just the Deploy Seven, being Deploy Seven, and it, other than that, it's pretty much exactly like a normal Star Destroyer. But Deploy Seven is huge. Because once you get to deploy it, it's just, it's it's a big tax. And a lot of people do have tractor beam decks. Uh, tractor beam is a very viable strategy. Um, it's been, I don't know how viable it is in the current meta, but I know it was viable in Special Edition all the way through Death Star 2 and Episode 1 cards. So 
If you have a tractor beam deck, this is the ship. This is the ship. One of the stronger Star Destroyers, plus Captain Lennox. I could... I had the complete Hoth set, and the only card I was missing was Captain Lennox. He was uncommon one. I could never pull him from a pack. I had to buy him on eBay, I think. No, I, I think I eventually got him. But after a long, grueling time. Let's move on to the Dagobah unique Star Destroyer. So this is the Avenger. I like the Avenger. I like Nita. I like his whole... <laughs> I like his whole uh, persona. He's like an he's like Ozzel's little brother. Uh, provides two ability. I love two ability. And subtract two from asteroid destinies. I like that too. Asteroids aren't if you're playing um, a tournament that's just we we played a tournament in Minneapolis a couple of years ago. I think it was Premier through Cloud City, and I included the Avenger. And people were running asteroids so commonly that the Avenger was a killer Star Destroyer to have because it, it, it didn't get hit by the asteroid field, unless they drew an asteroid as a destiny. But it, it, was, it was, I thought, was the best Star Destroyer you could have because two, two ability and two from the asteroids. I think it's pretty strong. Uh, plus, cool picture. I love the picture. And it's great getting a pack of Dagobah and not getting an interrupt for a rare. Am I right? So, oh, yeah, and then the ultimate... I know it's not a Star Destroyer. It's a Super Star Destroyer, but we have to include it. The Ultimate Dagobah Rare. Yeah, Yoda. My, my, uh, when I got a pack of Dagobah, this was the best card I could pull. This was the one I would get me so excited. So, we got... I uh, must have a scratch on the card. Uh, we have Unlimited Pilots, Unlimited Passengers, Immune to Less Than 12 Attrition. So, that Super Falcon might not destroy it, but it probably still will. Permanent Pilot Ability 3. You can't really rank it with the other Star Destroyers. The deploy cost is one-fourth of all your force. It's astronomical. You almost need... What's that location in Special Edition? Fondor. You almost need uh, Fondor even to deploy it. It's, it's, soup, it's great art, great picture. Just had to include it. Lovely card, lovely card. Uh, now, they didn't have a Star Destroyer in Cloud City or Jabba's Palace. I always thought Jabba's Sail Bards was a Star Destroyer. Just kidding. But Special Edition did have a unique Star Destroyer. Um, I'm not sure where it's at in the movie. I haven't really seen the Special Edition movies, and I don't care to, other than when I saw them when I was 16 in the theaters. Don't care to see them again, but I don't know what's, I don't know when it's in the movies. But it's a great... It's okay. Okay, deploys nine. Eh, pretty spendy. Permanent pilot ability 2, and a little extra forfeit on your TIE Fighters. Pretty good. Has a Destiny 2, the only Star Destroyer with a Destiny 2. All the rest are 1, except for the Star Destroyer from... Super Star Destroyer from Death Star 2. Uh, we, on the weaker side, I would say I don't really like it. I guess it has its place, if you have Nal Hada. Um, I didn't mean to rag on the Special Edition. I think Special Edition Star Wars CCG is the best set of Star Wars... I just don't care for the movies, but very cool picture, actually. I, 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 I like the picture, the art, uh, quote-unquote art. And then there's not a unique Star Destroyer until we get to Death Star 2, and then they have a whole bunch of unique Star Destroyers, which was probably the most exciting. I loved the Death Star 2 set. It was so cool. I Nothing's cooler than a unique Star Destroyer. Nothing's cooler than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then what? Was it 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 unique Star Destroyers? Insane. So we got the Accuser here. And they always have such such badass names. Uh, the Accuser is amazing. It might be the best Star Destroyer if you only include one Star Destroyer in your deck. Hyperspeed 4 is so good. It's underrated. The, ex the Executor, Executor, Executor. What did I call it earlier? You know, <laughs> I think it's the Executor. Now this is going to be a debate. Anyway... But the Executor having a hyper, hyper speed of 2 and all the other Star Destroyers having a hyper speed of 3, they are slow. Hyper speed 4 gives you a little more range. Sure, it's one power less and one armor less than the other Star Destroyers, but, you know, it deploys for 5. No, it deploys for 5. I mean, let's face it, you're not deploying this, right? You're going to deploy it as a react. And it deploys as a surprise. I think it's great. Modified for optimal crisis response. It's... If you're including one Star Destroyer, it's a great addition. Permanent pilot ability one. Everything else on it's a little worse, except the hyperspeed and the react. I, I like it. The accuser might be the strongest. Maybe, but we still got more to go. And then we have the Chimera. 
Chimera. I don't know. Everybody says different words. Chimera. The Chimera had six pilots, two two abilities. So everything's the same except two ability and immune nutrition. So this is the first Star Destroyer that's actually immune to attrition besides uh, the Super Super Star Destroyer. Um, and it's Thrawn's ship, and it deploys for nine. That's the that's the crappy part. Deploys for nine, yeah, forfeit ten. Okay, so one more forfeit, one more deploy. I don't think it's worth the trade-off. Ability to immune to attrition, it has its place. If you're running three or four Star Destroyers in your, in your deck... And you have enough force. Three or four, it could make the cut. It's close. The ability two is huge. A little higher forfeit's better. The immune nutrition is really big, too. Oh, plus the picture just is, is super cool, too. And then we got a little bit of the unique victory class. A little victory class, Star Destroyer. Uh, deploys for seven is still really expensive. I like victories, the nine unique victories, a lot, too, because their hyperspeed is four. And this guy's hyperspeed's four. And he has a permanent pilot of ability too. And uh, if you're running laser cannon, cannon battery, it's 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 a must include because it fires twice. Other other than that, play for seven, four for seven. I don't really see it in a lot of non-victory specific weapon capital weapon style decks. There's other choices for deploy seven that I think deploy seven or eight, like the tyrant, is just a better choice than this. But still. As its place, if you're running a victory class deck, it's a must include or a weapon deck. Now, we got the flagship, the second persona, persona in quotes, of the executor. Ex- executor. <laughs> executor. May at. Why didn't they just call it the executor? All the other ones have, uh, have, uh, those dominator, conquest, have those ominous names. This is just like a business, it's a businessman. The Executor, it's unlimited pilots, just like the other one, Ability 3. It's better, some, the 3 less deploy is huge. It's not immune to attrition unless you have flagship operations on the table. And we all know how hard it is to deploy flagship operations. It's like 5, five uh, Executor sites on table. Um, just insane requirements. And it doesn't add any to the force trains, but it adds to destinies for TIE Fighters. Destiny 4, yeah, it's probably better than the, the other one. So, not as cool of a picture. The other one has a better picture, in my opinion. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, we can't see it. Both both are really cool. Um, just had to include it. I really don't have that much of a strong opinion about it. They're just so expensive to deploy. Let's move on to the Judicator. So, this little guy, not little, has weapon destiny draws are plus two. Each of its weapon destiny draw is plus two. That's pretty good, each of them. Not just your total destiny draw, each of them. Permanent pilot ability one. Starfighters hit are power zero. That is, it's like a permanent, it's it's like Han and his blaster rifle that make him forfeit zero. This, no, it's not like that at all. But it's it's a, it makes hitting a ship worth it. It, it really, if you have a big power on there, if you have, uh, if you're, you're sitting with power 12 or something, and they have their Super Falcon, and you somehow hit it with all those interrupts from Special Edition that add to Weapon Destiny Draw, and you hit their Falcon, their 15 power Falcon, or whatever insane number it is, it goes to zero. It doesn't matter how much power the pilots are adding. It, you can really have a good battle, and if they don't have a Hujix, or a Gek, or Hujix, make, if, if you know what that card does. If they don't have one of those, they could suffer huge losses. So, pretty... If you're not running a weapon deck, um, a, a capital weapon deck, I would never put it in your deck. But other than that, it's amazing. Because other than that, it's just a standard Star Destroyer. Very cool art, too. And then we got the Thunder play, Flare, which was in, what was it, in second anthology or third anthology? So it already came out as a white-bordered version, and now it's out again. You know, deploy for seven, four for seven. I always liked it because it was power nine and deployed for seven. And the turbo blasters may deploy and fire for free. So, again, it's good in a weapon deck. Yeah, it has ability one. Hyperspeed two is terrible. I've gotten this this little fat boy stranded at a lot of uh, systems because I was thinking it was three and it's two because I thought it was a regular Star Destroyer. And I've gotten it stranded. It's a slow boy. 
But the play's cheap and has I would take the seven I would take the seven seven over an eight nine. Because if you're losing the star destroyer, you're losing the star destroyer. It's you're probably you're probably not worried about two forfeit. <laughs> um, love love the seven deploy, love the seven deploy. Great star destroyer. Last but not least, the visage. The visage. All right, this is basically your uh, what tainted four uh, for the dark side that can deploy with. It's your spy. Deploy without four seconds. Too bad it can't deploy to the rendezvous point. That'd be pretty funny. But it can really throw off some decks where they're just sitting on Alderaan or something and and they don't expect anything coming for them. It can lay a beat down on on some decks that are just floating around, not expecting you to have this. Uh, other than that, not anything spectacular. Exactly like a normal Star Destroyer. One more armor. Um, so if you're not going to use it for the surprise or you have some situation... I, I'm trying to think of all the situations where rebels would sit on a Duntuin. I've seen them sit there. Uh, um, Alderaan, I've seen them sit there. But in in numbers decks, like sitting there with droids on their ships with never tell me the odds or something, um, it, it it has its use. It's a good card. I I really like it. So that's that's the Star Destroyer. So very quickly. I'm going to tell you what my favorite Star Destroyer and least favorite is. It's hard to rank them. They're all amazing. They're all cool. So the Stalker, first of all, gets my worst Star Destroyer, but favorite Star Destroyer. So it's right in the middle. It's the coolest picture, best picture, worst at everything else. Very, very unique situation. I When I pulled this from a pack, I was the happiest boy alive. Great, great. Great. I would say the worst Star Destroyer besides the Stalker is the the Vengeance. This because the Deploy for 9, I really hate. I, I don't like it. Yes, Ability 2, but it's just too much. And the Destiny, I, I just don't like it. It's my least favorite. Sorry, Vengeance. Still, I love all the Star Destroyers, so it's still a 9 out of 10. It's still beautiful. What did they say, like... Even bad pizza is still good pizza. So even a bad star destroyer, even even a bad star destroyer is a good star destroyer. I still like it. Pizza's yeah, never mind. Um, and I, the strongest star destroyer, I would say, uh, I don't know. It's just a toss up. I like all the thunder flare, devastator, thunder flare, devastator, tyrant. I would all put it at the top three. Tyrant, thunder flare, both because they deploy seven. Um, Devastator because it's ability to. Uh, I I don't know. It's tough. Chimera could be up there. They're all so close. The ability to is huge. The deploy is cheap. It's just whatever you want. Just depends. So that's my opinion. Tell me what your favorite Star Destroyer is or Super Star Destroyer. I'd love to hear your comments. I've already talked too long. I'm a little bloviated as it is. So let's continue. We got. I almost forgot the bonus content. We got a little. Rebel card, we got Bravo Fighter. So this is a fun little card that is... Read the flavor text. It doesn't tell you who the permanent pilot is. Flown by an unknown pilot who likes to spin a lot. Hmm. Thinking back on episode one, who likes to spin a lot? That's right. Little Anakin Skywalker. And what gives it away is permanent pilot provides ability of three. Scratching your head still? Still don't believe me? Look at this little picture of the permanent pilot. That's not just anybody. That's not a picture of a little generic pilot. No, that's R2-D2, and that's Annie Skywalker. And guess what? This here is the is the unknown pilot to that ship. And when he was sitting there, he was probably thinking about the time he flew in his little Bravo fighter and accidentally destroyed the blockade. And it's just really fascinating to think about him flying that ship and how far he came. I just think it's amazing. I, I, I want I want you all to reflect on that too. And there you have it. Another mediocre list. So without further ado, you better not skip ahead. You have to watch the whole video before you get to this part. Let's pick the winner for the starter deck. So there were 39 people who commented as of now. And I'm going to random number generate 1 through 39. And just go down the list. And whoever wins, wins. Good luck.
Great job. Congratulations, Eric Collingsworth. You won it. You're the big winner. So I'll be sending that out to you as soon as I get a reply from you. Congratulations. And good luck to you all next week. Let's talk about last week's video. So a couple comments I got a couple times. You know, the 2-2 two, two Han. Okay, yeah. He's great in profit decks. Master Luke's great in profit decks. Uh, ben Kenobi's great in profit decks. I completely overlooked the profit deck angle. Awesome. Retrieved tons of force. Um, a lot. Of, some guy pulled a Millennium Falcon and a Han Solo in their in their uh, sealed deck tournament. I wonder how uh, that'd be a little scary of a combo. <laughs> that'd be pretty pretty good tournament to have. A lot of people said Commander Luke was their favorite. Yeah, it's such an iconic card. It's 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 just not. Uh, it's it's hard to justify it being the best, but it does have the best nostalgia. Yeah, it's just the worst Luke, but the best Luke at the same time. It's fun for theme decks, for sure. Um, Porkins, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Luke, this is very interesting. I had to look into this. Luke from Premiere is harder to pull out of a pack than Luke from Death Star 2, and it's actually true. So Luke, won, Luke is a rare one from Premiere, and there's so many rares in Premiere, and then so every sheet from Premiere would have two rare ones and four rare twos. And there were so many rare ones that pulling a rare one from a pack was pretty pretty tough. I mean, it didn't happen very much. You're always pulling Seekers and uh, Assault Rifle Blasters and all these other crappy rare twos. Not that there wasn't good rare twos. Like, Mahdi was a rare two, I think. Tag was a rare two. But there was a really slim chance to pull a rare one. That's why getting mains was so hard. And then, in Death Star 2, there was three rares per sheet per rare sheet, and the ultra rare Luke Skywalker and Emperor were two per sheet, so it was two-thirds less chance than a regular rare to pull the ultra rare, if that makes sense. Also, there was two cards that had four cards per, four cards per sheet, four cards per sheet, to make up for the Luke only having two, or the Emperor only had two, and I know one's a strike force can't remember the other ones. So there's a few rares in Death Star 2 that are crappy. They're not that bad, but you pull them twice as much as the Ultra Rare. So I thought that was a really interesting fact. So the following weeks, i got a special episode planned for Christmas. Going to be fun. Going to be much better than this piece of episode. And then got got a couple more ideas, and then there's some stuff in the pipeline. Hopefully everybody's getting excited uh, and everybody has a good Christmas. And keep collecting. I know what Santa's bringing me.